Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador. I'd like to take the opportunity to run you through my movie settings when using the A7R 3 camera. Now we're going to start by setting the uh, the movie shoot mode on the shoot mode dial on the top of the camera and then we're going to dive into the menus. Now we're going to start with that toolbox icon there on the second tab. You're going to have to choose whether you're going to be using NTSC or PAL. Now NTSC is typically um, for North America and Japan and PAL is typically for uh, Europe and Australia. Now you might want to Google that if you're unsure of the appropriate setting. It is an important setting. Um, now when we do um, a change from NTSC to PAL or vice versa, uh, the, uh, the camera is going to have to restart and you're going to have to reformat the card uh, for this uh, new NTSC or PAL format. Okay, now uh, NTSC is set up for 60 hertz, and you'll typically be shooting in 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. And if you're working with PAL, you're going to be working with 25 uh, or 50 frames per second. Now um, we're going to um, uh, make sure that that is an important setting because this will influence what shutter speeds you can actually se uh, select when working with this um, uh, format. Okay, now uh, this is all to do with the optimum frame rates and shutter speed. It can lead to flickering if you're using inappropriate um, uh, shutter speeds uh, with the movie settings you have selected. Um, you can actually download uh, flicker free apps for your mobile device to make sure you're using an appropriate shutter speed uh, for the, um, the format you've chosen. Now we're going to be choosing a lot of camera settings to shoot movies in the optimum quality, um, but uh, don't despair that you're going to have to do this once because you can register all of these to a memory, which we'll be doing at the end of the movie, and then quickly recall them. Okay, so uh, I'm coming into that first tab and I'm coming down to aspect ratio. Now you don't actually have to set the 16:9 aspect ratio. Uh, as soon as you start shooting a movie, it will default uh, to that 16 so it doesn't matter if you've got 3, 2 selected here. Uh, the first um, uh, menu option that you probably want to uh, change is the APS-C Super 35mm shooting mode. Now just go into that and set the uh, first option to manual and the second option to off. This will give us maximum flexibility as to when we're shooting movies as whether to shoot in Super 35 or in full frame. Now you will get a little bit more quality from the a7r3 by shooting in super 35 but this will um, change your uh, focal length of the lenses that you're shooting with now that i've set that up um, you can see that um, i'm going to be doing this later but i'm going to um, add this uh, option uh, to the function menu so i can quickly go in and choose whether to shoot full frame or super 35 uh, as i'm shooting and uh, add, this is with the super 35 off you can see this is with a 35 5mm lens, uh, but as soon as I decide to uh, press the function key and select uh, that uh, Super 35 and put it to on, then that's going to give me a magnified view, and that's obviously with the Super 35 on. Okay, we'll be setting that up in the function menu towards the end of the movie. Now I've moved forward a tab, uh, tab 2, and uh, you may be um, uh, thinking that you may need to change the color space from maybe Adobe RGB to sRGB, but again it doesn't really matter what color space you're using, uh, basically the colors are going to be identical whether you shoot in either of those color spaces. Okay, focus mode. Now I'm going to be shooting in continuous AF. Uh, there are going to be some movie shooters who prefer to shoot in manual and uh, this is going to be an option. I can uh, change my mind and shoot in manual later, but I'm going to set up the, uh, the custom settings uh, for continuous AF. I'm going to set the focus area to wide. Uh, basically um, this will help um, you um, let the camera uh, choose the subject in the frame. Now we can override this very quickly and I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Now if you want to move focus with the joystick this is an option and what I would do is I would choose expand flexible spot or any of the um, uh, flexible spots really um, in order to move the focus with the joystick on the back of the camera. Now my favorite is actually expand flexible spot, uh, but any of these options uh, above this uh, will actually do um, a pretty good job as well.
Now uh, we're coming forward a tab onto the six tab and I want you to or I, I invite you to enable the center lock on AF. Now it is possible to track a moving subject in HD mode not 4k um, but this is obviously uh, advantageous if you're trying to follow a subject without having to use the joystick uh, to follow focus. Okay, so um, set face priority in AF, just enter this menu and uh, basically switch both of these. Uh, the camera will let you know when it's picked up a face and we can move the priority of faces again uh, with the joystick if you've chosen um, one of the variable spot uh, AF modes there. ISO. Now if you're going to be shooting in um, a manual um, um, uh, exposure mode then you might want to set um, a, a fixed uh, ISO setting um, now. Uh, if you're going to be working with uh, an auto um, uh, exposure priority uh, then you may want to also switch this to ISO auto. Okay, now face priority in multimeter. This is basically going to, if it picks up a face, it's going to adjust the exposure um, uh, if it finds that face to make sure that the face is appropriately exposed. Now, if you don't want the exposure adjusting as it picks up faces, then you might want to disable this. Okay, um, white balance, we're on the 12th tab. Again, I would prefer to use auto white balance, but uh, if you don't want that uh, white balance to um, uh, vary as you uh, may, maybe pan the camera, then again, you probably want to choose a fixed white balance setting there. Auto HDR, that will have an impact on movies. Um, if you don't want the shadows too dark, you could uh, enable that. Okay, creative style. Typically you don't need to use the creative style to alter the way the movie looks. We're going to be doing picture profiles for this. Um, but for A9 users, uh, we don't have picture profiles. So I would encourage uh, maybe users of an A9 to come into the creative style. And if you are shooting movies in high contrast, I would lower the contrast to minus three. This will um, avoid you clipping the highlights and crushing the shadows by shooting with excessive contrast. Typically when the sun is out, um, you typically want to wind this contrast down to minus three. Now, if you're going to be using the picture profiles on the A7R 3 you can leave this at the default. Picture profiles, uh, by default they will be off, okay, but I'm going to show you the, um, the advantage of shooting picture profiles. Now, um, it's best to uh, try and uh, do the um, to get the movie looking as good as possible and not clip the highlights in camera. Okay, so the picture profile off, you can see this scene. Now, if I move over one and two, that will actually increase the contrast of the movie. Now, obviously, if the sun is out, this is going to work against you. So I'd only encourage you to use either one or two, PP1, PP2, if, um, if you're shooting in very low contrast situations. Now, all of these profiles are customizable. I'm just going to be working with the defaults here. Now, um, four and uh, five um, are going to be um, uh, lower contrast, sorry, three and four, picture profile three and four is going to lower the contrast. It's actually going to open up uh, the shadows a little bit so we don't crush those shadows. However, if the sun is out, I would probably encourage you to um, lean towards uh, PP5 and PP6. This is going to create a, a flatter looking movie, but um, you're going to uh, be less likely to clip the highlights of the movie. Now remember, we're not shooting in RAW, we can't recover the highlights in post, so it's important that we don't clip the highlights of a movie uh, as we're capturing that movie. So uh, picture profile five and six, uh, use the Cine 1 uh, Gamma, and this is actually going to lower the contrast significantly, even more than minus three contrast on that creative style. If you've been lowering the contrast in um, capture, then you are going to have to uh, replace or add that contrast back in in post-production. Now this is a very low contrast and I would dissuade you from using this if you're not prepared to do a little bit of effort grading these movies in a program such as Premiere Pro. Now typically if we are um, selecting PP7 and PP8 we are going to adjust the exposure on the exposure compensation dial or ramp up the exposure if we're using manual exposure. 
Now I typically encourage you to raise the exposure by 2 EV if you are using these very flat profiles. Now the, the, the minimum ISO will actually be shooting at 800 ISO so you don't want to be looking at excessive noise and that's the reason we raise the exposure. And then we're going to um, grade these in post-production. Uh, PP8 um, is another very flat uh, profile and uh, you can see that S log 3 um, there is um, again uh, again for experienced um, movie shooters who are prepared to grade the movies in post. If you've been using the S-Log2 or S-Log3 profiles, um, the whole grading process is made a lot easier if you can access some lookup tables or LUTs. Uh, these will make um, the whole grading process a lot easier by doing all of the heavy lifting to get the files back uh, looking near normal. Now if we move forward onto the second camera tab, you go on the um, uh, basically the first of the tabs in the, in the second camera menus, uh, you're going to be looking at exposure mode for movies. Now we're not going to be able to use the exposure modes on the top of the um, uh, mode dial on the top of the camera because we've set that to movie. So we're going to set um, the, uh, the mode here in this menu item and I'm setting it to shutter priority. The other alternative may be manual exposure. Now if you are working with um, shutter priority uh, and we're going to be using a 50th of a second as the default or a 60th of a second if you're shooting 30 frames per second. Now you, in, if in, you're shooting in um, full sunlight um, you're going to be working at uh, probably f16 which is going to uh, deny you from using shallow depth of field. So the way we get that shallow depth of field when we're working with such a slow shutter speed is to use ND filters and I would encourage you maybe to get uh, two or three of these ND filters. Now my personal choice is an ND8, 32 and 64. When I put these on this is going to allow me to use wider apertures and use shallow depth of field. Okay, the reason we're shooting at the slower shutter speeds is to avoid choppy movies, okay, which uh, the movies will start to look like a flicker book uh, rather than having the movement flow. We want a, a small amount of movement blur to help the movie flow. And um, pretty much you may have been an aperture priority shooter, but certainly for movies, the shutter speed is the priority in high quality movies. If you are going to change the, um, the shoot mode, uh, exposure mode uh, on the fly, now you're going to go into the function menu again and you'll see in the bottom right hand corner uh, this allows us to change the um, exposure mode maybe from shutter priority to manual exposure without having to do adjust that shutter mode dial on the top of the camera. And there we can see all of those movie icons linked to the exposure modes and this is the way we're going to change this when we're shooting movies on the A7R3. Uh, um, file format um, below the exposure mode, um, we're going to be um, uh, choosing whether we're going to be shooting in HD or 1920, 1080 or whether we're going to be shooting in 4K. Now in 4K if you're going to be shooting for um, long clips be prepared for the sensor to get very hot. Now I typically shoot um, clips less than five minutes long so I never encounter uh, problems with overheating. Uh, but if you're going to do a half an hour uh, presentation or uh, so then I would perhaps uh, consider uh, shooting in HD. Now um, I'm, I've set this camera up for PAL so you'll also see that um, after choosing 4K if I'm uh, choosing the record settings I'm going to be shooting at 25p, that's 25 progressive, that's frames per second in 100m. Now the 100m refers to the compression setting. The higher the number, the lower the compression, the higher the quality of the movie. Now the movie files will be bigger on the card but you're going to get a better quality movie uh, in this way. If you lower that to 60m the movie file will be smaller on the memory card but um, the compression setting will be higher, the quality will be lower. Now these are the settings for PAL, that's Europe, Australia etc. Okay if you're being shooting in uh, NTSC, North America, 
uh, much of South America, Japan, etc., then you'll be getting the choice of 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And again, that second number, the 100M, uh, the higher the number, the lower the compression. Okay, moving forward, S and Q. Now, occasionally we want, we want to shoot uh, with altered frame rates. And so rather than going back into the camera settings, we can set up this slow and quick. Now, we can either choose a higher frame rate or a slower frame rate, depending on a certain look. Now, if you're shooting with, say, 100 frames per second, you're not going to be able to do this in the 4K. Okay, now I've set up my um, slow and quick to 100 frames per second. If you're shooting in NTSC, you'll find that there's, a, there's an option for 120 frames per second. Okay, so let's take um, a, a look at the, uh, the next um, um, uh, option for uh, retrieving those S&Q settings. We'll basically move from the movie shoot mode to S&Q, so we don't have to go into the main menus to switch between uh, the higher frame rate and the uh, the normal frame rate. So we're moving forward um, uh, a tab here onto the second tab and we're looking at uh, the uh, AF drive speed. Now the default is normal. Basically when you move the joystick or uh, to pull focus, um, the focus is going to move relatively quickly. Now if you're looking for a very slow focus shift, uh, as uh, the type of look that you're going for, then I would go into this menu item and maybe choose slow from the menus so that when you move the joystick to a different area of the frame, the, um, the focus will glide slowly between the two rather than jump. Obviously, if you're shooting um, a music video with a fast beat, uh, that may be inappropriate and you might go too fast. Uh, but typically, uh, most of Hollywood does these slow focus pulls. And so this is my, something to consider here. OK, three choices, fast, normal, slow. OK, so audio recording. Um, now, uh, you may be uh, recording audio separately, but I'd still put the audio recording on so you can synchronize the camera audio with any audio that you're capturing via a separate device. OK, now, um, typically, if you are recording the audio to the camera, I would encourage you not to use the microphones of the actual camera. Typically, you're, uh, you're going to be using um, a shotgun mic that plugs in uh, to the audio input on the camera. OK, and I would also monitor the sound as the audio is coming in. Uh, you don't want to be um, uh, peaking. Uh, you don't want the audio too loud and breaking up. You can always raise the audio a little bit in post, uh, but if it's um, if it's breaking up because it's too loud, then that's going to be a difficult fix in post production. If dialogue is um, your priority, and now typically Hollywood be will be using these boom microphones. Now that's not really appropriate for a run and gun movie uh, making, where if you're a single operator. So if uh, dialogue is uh, the primary audio, I would certainly consider using a Lavelia mic. Um, or a lapel mic. Now the the Sony one will plug into the uh, the multi-port uh, shoe on the top of the camera, and the audio will be fed directly to the camera. And it's wireless, so um, it doesn't really matter how far your subject is away from the camera, um, so long as they're not over the horizon line. Uh, the audio will be very very good quality. So audio level display again, you really want to be monitoring that audio if um, that is important. OK, so um, we're moving forward a tab. Um, I haven't looked at the wind noise reduction. Typically, I'm wearing a sock over my shotgun mic to reduce uh, any sort of crackle created by windy conditions. Um, you may also be interested in these marker displays. Uh, they should actually be uh, uh, geared the other way around because you really need to go to marker settings first uh, to choose what sort of overlay over the movie that you're wanting. You might be shooting a movie that's not 16.9 and you really want to see um, uh, uh, guidelines as where the movie that you're recording will fall out of that area. You might be sh uh, shooting ultra uh, wide uh, for the final output, i.e. not 16.9, maybe 16.8 or 16.7, and you want those displays overlaid your movie to help make sure that you're not including content that will be clipped out in post-production. 
So at the bottom of this tab, there is an, quite an important setting, and that is Movie with Shutter. Now, this will enable you to use the shutter release rather than the movie button on the back of the camera. Now, this only works if you've selected the movie mode on the top dial of the camera, but I actually prefer using the shutter release to start and stop the movie. So this is a very useful feature on the A7R 3 so um, moving forward onto the fourth tab of the second uh, camera menus, we're looking at steady shot. Uh, as soon as you pick the camera off a monopod or a tripod, I uh, really want that steady shot on. And the steady shot uh, feature is very useful for the A7R 3 Okay, so uh, moving on to the sixth tab, we've got zebra settings or zebra settings, depending on which side of the pond you're living on. Uh, these uh, zebras or zebras are an early warning um, idea of when you're likely to be um, pushing the highlights of your movie too high. Now, typically, I'll um, set the zebra settings to 100 plus. This warns me of any clipping of the movie. Now, there is an alternative. You could set this lower than 100, maybe to 90, and uh, then be reassured that if these uh, zebras on the white shirts of your models, uh, that is uh, accurately placed. It's not clipping when the zebras are showing. It's actually showing that the um, uh, the, that those white shirts are pitched at the 90% brightness mark. As I said, I typically prefer to use the 100 plus. So as soon as I see the zebras, I know I've got a problem and I have to use the exposure compensation dial to lower the exposure. Now this is um, a screenshot of uh, what the zebras will look like on an overexposed areas. Uh, the zebras are just coming into the highlights of those uh, buildings. And this would encourage me to lower the exposure. So on the eighth tab, uh, we're going to set up custom key. Now you'll notice that there's custom key for still shooting and custom key for movie sh shooting. Now the custom key uh, settings for the movies will actually follow on from the stills unless you override them. Uh, there are a couple that you may want to override. Um, I'm going to uh, move over to the second tab of the custom keys and I'm going to um, um, program the center button for the center lock on AF that we enabled earlier in this uh, tutorial. Um, this is going to allow me to quickly um, um, follow focus by using the um, that center button on the wheel if necessary. So all I need to do um, when I'm recording a movie is uh, press that center button and then I'll lock on to whatever's in the center of the screen and let the uh, camera then follow the subject around the screen. Uh, and you'll get this um, little um, uh, box uh, moving around your subject and that will move and follow around the screen if the lock on is working effectively. Okay, so um, we're on the uh, the eighth tab um, below the custom key, where it's possibly worth uh, setting up a couple of um, function menus. Um, now I'm going to go into that function menu, and I'm going to uh, set up one of the things that I often change when uh, shooting movies is to adjust the picture profile. I might be by default shooting with uh, PP6, um, but if the contrast of my situation drops and the sunlight has disappeared. I will switch the picture profile off or set it back to picture profile one. So um, on the uh, second, on the lower section, I'm just choosing um, one of the options here that I typically haven't used. And I'm going to set that up on the lower two uh, for APS-C Super 35 shoot. Now we did um, uh, set those up earlier, very early in the movie. And this allows me now to come in and uh, pick that um, option up in the function menu to switch between full frame and super 35 mode. We're moving right um, forward now onto the um, that toolbox uh, menus there and uh, on the first tab and I'm coming down to gamma display assist. Now this is especially useful if you're working with the S-Log profiles, um, typically PP7, PP8. Uh, if you're going to be using um, those profiles, um, then you're going to want um, not to uh, see a very flat view uh, in the EVF or on the LCD monitor. 
This will give you a normal display um, to help you um, uh, frame your image, um, but you're going to be recording that very flat movie um, to the memory card. On the second tab of that toolbox menus, you have touch operation. Now you want to enable this, um, and this is, uh, allows you to go from wide AF um, over to um, a spot AF just by touching the back of the screen. And I've got some examples uh, to explain this. At the moment we're in um, AFC, continuous autofocus, and I'm using the variable spot AF area. Now all I have to do to move focus is move the joystick uh, to move my focus point uh, to the right side to pick up uh, this distant um, face here, or I can move it over to the left. And depending on how, um, how fast or slow I've chosen um, the AF speed, uh, that will move focus as it picks up the new subject. Now if you're working with wide and you can't use that joystick, this is where the touch screen comes into its own. You're basically going to just tap the screen uh, on the subject that you now want to focus on and again that will move over. Now as soon as you do that you move out of uh, wide AF into that um, uh, spot. And so um, you, you're going to need to want to cancel that as soon as you've done that. And you can do that either by tapping the icon on the, uh, the monitor there, or you can press the center button uh, and that will cancel and put you back into AF wide. Let's uh, go back into the custom key. Um, now, um, you can do this in the movie custom keys or just in the general custom keys because I've actually got this set up for my stills as well and I'm reprogramming the AEL button which is the um, the automatic exposure locker button. Now I, I typically will set this up for focus settings. Now you can um, to choose an alternative and the reason I'm doing this is I can quickly um, uh, go into focus magnify if I'm uh, moving over to manual focus. Okay, so if you don't want to use focus settings, you can choose focus magnifier when you're setting up that custom key. But when you are in manual focus mode, they both actually do the same thing, which is to give you access to the focus magnifier. So to give you an example, I'm shooting in AFC, but now I want to work with manual focus. Uh, I'm just going to press the function key and change the focus uh, from AFC to manual focus. Okay, and then uh, all I need to do is uh, tap the AEL button, and this is going to give me access if I uh, press the center button or the AEL button a second time to go in and magnify the subject. I can now pull focus with the focus ring on the lens to get accurate focus. Okay, so that is really how I'm going to be working uh, with my AF in uh, when I'm shooting movies, uh, either using AF wide, um, uh, a flexible spot, uh, or manual focus. Okay, now you've got to the end of this quite long movie. You probably want to um, uh, save all of these settings so you don't have to remember to do this. There are a lot of settings and they're often very different settings uh, that we use when shooting stills. So this is a great thing to record to a memory. Now you can go in and save this to one or three settings. Now typically um, I will have already set all three of these memory settings for various options. If you've seen my other movies for setting up the camera, for shooting landscape, portrait or fast moving action, you'll know I've already assigned these three. Now this is uh, where you can use uh, the other M settings. Now the only downside of using one of these settings is the, uh, the settings will be saved to a memory card. Now these settings will be um, will disappear uh, once you reformat the card. So you may want to keep um, a backup of these settings uh, on your computer so you can drag them back to a memory card each time you go out to shoot movers. So um, uh, once we've done that we can simply um, uh, move uh, the shooting mode dial round to one. Even if you set it up onto one of the M1, M2, M3, M4 settings, it will give you an option to pick that up uh, even when we go to these uh, one, two or three settings. Okay, so um, 
Just remember, um, if you uh, when you are setting up for the exposure mode, you are going to be um, setting up the uh, 50th of a second. Now keep an eye on that 50th of a second. It is easy to uh, knock these dials. Now it, you might be working with the front or rear dial, depending on how you set up your camera, but just keep an eye on that. Now typically a 50th of a second is typically what Hollywood uses as their default shutter speed. If you are working with 30 frames, per second you could um, choose a 60th of a second as soon as you go to a hundred or, or um, frames per second you might want to uh, obviously choose a faster shutter speed um, such as 200th of a second so a couple of options there but um, obviously if you are in the shutter priority um, you do have that option uh, to roll um, either of those dials around to you get to the appropriate shutter speed Okay, so um, that concludes this, um, this uh, uh, movie settings. Um, just um, uh, take a look for the other uh, three or four movies that I've made uh, to complete uh, how I've set up my A7R3 for pro quality shooting. I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Global Imaging Ambassador.